this is what we're here for, is remembering all the days of fun days in the 1950s in Chester. Um, we got into, we love the cracker barrel idea. We pretend we have a little barrel here to sit around <coughs> in the general store. Uh, I'm gonna, um, we got pictures that Bob Blair has, Bob Blair, I always call you Young Bob Blair or Bob Blair the Third. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he's famous, famous family. And Eileen is going to Eileen Cipher is going to start the talking off, and then we just want you all to share your memories. This is what this is about. This is no speaker, and you listen. This is everybody. So. Don't forget to introduce yourself. <laughs> I'm Carrie Hall. I'm the president right now of the Historical Society, and I'm not an old timer here. I've been here for 40 some years, and I love this town. I'll just, I should introduce myself. I mean, people may know me, but I'm the one who had this brilliant idea, which I'm glad so many people have come. Um, I grew up here, I grew up on uh, Route 148, right near the foot of Cypher Road, named after our grandparents, and my brother still lives in that house, Ed. And my cousin Tom was next door. He's come over from Mystic, and so we have a, represent, a representative of the Cy representatives of the Cipher Clan, as one of my teachers used to say in high school. We called it Cipherville out there. <laughs> so, so many of us. But anyway, I just the older I get, I was away for 30 years, but I, I am a Chester native, and I'm happy to be back here since '95. And I treasure my time here as a child, and I just thought it would be lovely to share our memories. So. We'll open it up, we'll, we'll see the pictures, people will have ideas and talk, and if there's a lull, I can get up and say more, but let's go on with the photographs now. We'll jump to the next one. Do you all remember what it looked like then? Yes. Absolutely. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hardware store. Yeah, Bill Carini's store. Bill Is that Bill in the background? Just Carini. Bill Carini. Just 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 a lamp? Yeah. A jug. I made it into a lamp. Well, somebody made a remark about all the stores that were downtown when we were kids. They didn't have to go to the deep river. Yeah. Four grocery stores. Four grocery stores. Four of them and two package stores. Two package stores, four grocery stores. It's only two package stores. A meat, meat market. Well, that was part of one of the grocery stores. Two meat markets. Two meat markets. There was a there was a shoe repair place. Yeah. Where? Right outside the package store. Yeah. Right outside the package store. Hey, oh yeah, over there. Yeah. That's my grandfather's store. Yeah. Which one? Carlson's grocery. Oh yeah, right. Is he a red hair? You're on. Somebody up there. What's the look that much different now? No, that was. How long did? That was fun. Yeah, that was. That was afterwards. Yeah. How long did your grandfather own it? A long time? 20 years? More than that. Probably more than that. But before yeah. that, it was AMP. Right, he was a manager there. He was a manager at the AMP before that. How long did your parents have? 35. Was that you there too? No, I don't think so. Okay. The connection was in town. And the AMP was across the street where the Fed store is. Feel free to run up if you want to point to somebody so you can know who it is. <laughs> or talk up. Yeah. By the way, we are putting this on YouTube, so I just want you to know if you say anything, you might end up being on YouTube. So don't. It's a very nice channel that we're on, our Chester Shore. Don't say anything about anybody you don't want to be here. <laughs> I'm John Lewis. Um, Dougie's father and grandfather ran Carlson's back in the in the fifties. I can remember Dougie's father like it was yesterday. He always had a pencil, yellow pencil, behind his ear, and he'd bring you out on a paper bag. Take that pencil out. And he'd write everything. He could have put it in the machine. And if he went in there and he wasn't doing anything, he always had his foot up on the counter. And he'd always lean in like this. Grandfather had a little adding machine over in the, the next aisle over, and he would punch it. He'd ring it. He'd punch it. He'd ring it. You know, and that's that's how they did it. You know, no cash registers. There was no, you know, no. No really add machines. Oh, art worked there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can I can add I can add one thing to that or maybe many, but uh, uh, that his store was so well known and he knew people so well that people would call in and say, Vic, I'll be down for my groceries. 
<laughs> Did he have you go pick them? He, he, he had, I, he'd give me a list, I'd go pick all the stuff out. And, and if I came back with uh, like the dog food, if it wasn't Kalo dog food, he sent me back. <laughs> but there, was, there were quite a few people that just called and said they'd be down in half an hour. Oh, wow. That was Art Christensen. You might want to stand up and yeah, so feel like it. Yeah. Doug, so, yeah. you call your father Doug? Yep, yep, yes, yep, yep, it did. His, his real name was Vic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. He did call you Doug. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, he yeah. always did. Yeah. Just a nickname, I guess. The interesting thing about this scene is they put the green and the tree and the flagpole there just for the filming yeah. that happened to Jane. And as soon as they were done, they took it all away again. And it really did look quite nice. <laughs> Where's the ice machine? The funny thing in that scene I, I just noticed is there's like temporary fencing up in front of the park. So I don't know if they're actually filming the movie at this point or it just happens to be the Memorial Day parade at the same time they're, um, it's you know, they were getting things ready. Okay. I have to look at the movie to really know. Who's up there? That's building's got a new owner. Yeah. 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 Charlie did it. Charlie passed away. That's right. Yep. Yep. That's why the memorial stone is there. It's going to stay there. Yep, and it's going to stay there. Yes. Yeah. Good. That's part of history. That's that is history. I didn't know that right there. I thought that they had to Yep, every day. This is the Crossroads Society, right? No. No. No, it's not. Down here? Okay, wait. We need, I need correction. I thought this was the one across from the Historical Society building. And you all are saying it's Pollard's house? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love Black. Yeah, we're represented. Oh, my gosh. That really looks different. So is that, so they're in that picture, Barbara and... Thank you. Uh, Charlie. Charlie. Charlie, Margaret, and Tripp. Yeah. 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 I think there's son and daughter in it, too. Yeah, yeah. Charlie, thanks. Charlie, Charlie, somebody yeah. Yeah. Somebody's yeah. Somebody's sitting yeah. in the back. Uh, Charlie, Tripp, was in my class. Who said that? Who said that? Yeah, a little bit. Wow. Yeah. 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 Did somebody say they were in Peggy's class? Yeah. Does anyone want to tell the story of the Alabog? Oh, Is, yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, when I was a youngster, I hung out there, and uh, how, how shall I say where it was? What's in the building that's in there now? What's Black Cat and Leather. The Witch Building. Ceramic building. Oh, that was the Alabog, and it was a coffee shop and a, and a grill and some, and some uh, booths. Mm -hmm. and the jukebox that my brother took care of. <laughs> and um, Al Martorelli ran it, and, and Bob Blair. Although Bob, I'm not sure how he was involved in it, except that he was never in there cooking. What did he do? I don't know. He was a silent yeah, partner. He was a silent <laughs> partner. He was in the picture, uh, picture. estate. But uh, Al Martorelli ran it, and uh, everybody hung around in there. And the picture on the right is this Bob, Bob right? Yes. He, po he came in to post for pictures. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right Recorded for office at the time. And, um, and 
and Mardi Gras. Um, no. Not no. Al Mardi Gras? Yeah. No. 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 His sister Mary. Oh, who did his sister marry? What's the guy <laughs> on the right? I oh, can't think of his name. O'Neill. But anyway, yeah, it's a place where everybody hung around, and, and it was a great little luncheon. And that was in the... How Oh, 1555. Yeah. 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 Not Jim Moran. No, no, no Sir Moran. No, at. Uh, well, we'll come back to what you think of it. Mike's name is Angie. Angie. Uh, so now? No. Mike's an artist? No. no. All right. She'll come to me. Anybody remember going in it? Did you, pay? Did you pay? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. You were probably a little kid. I was about four or five. Yeah. I sat on a stool and spit. <laughs> Baldy, Dino Baldy. Oh, there's Johnny Whitmore. Oh, there's Johnny Whitmore. 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 Johnny so, why is he all dressed up? Because that was kind of like his act. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, he's just playing the bones. Yeah. He's playing the bones right there. Yeah, the bones. It was kind of like his act. I like the spoon. Part of, okay. group, part of a group of people that hung around in the paddock. Yeah. It was him. There was a guy they called the Russian. Yeah. Uh, uh, Johnny Ryan. His Johnny name Ryan. was Fopiana, but for some reason they called him Johnny, Johnny, Ryan. Johnny Ryan. There was a whole group that hung around at the Patacock. And I always thought later when I got a little smarter that it, that it was like, like Steinbeck's. Uh, uh, <laughs> Canary Row. Yeah. You know? yeah. And it was, it was sort of like this group that was... It wasn't like they were hiding you. No. Find them pretty easy. You know? <laughs> he said dress up like that on Sundays. Did he kind of dressed up like that every day. <laughs> <laughs> I remember him on Sundays like that. <laughs> see, see, one of the things that I think is coming out a little bit for me is that, um, I mean, I was, well, I'll tell you my age, I was born in 46. So um, we were rarely downtown. We were at the other end of Chester. And we didn't, you know, we didn't go down and, and walk around and, and do things. So all of you who have these memories, I think that, you know, your parents were there or you were nearby, and it's wonderful to hear, you yeah. know, that you have this location here. Because the downtown for me was someplace we, you know, we'd stop to get meat or go to the, the get, get medicine, but it wasn't a place that we hung around, you know. It was too far away, three and a half miles. It was downtown. And no. it was no, no, I'm sorry, George Tabuki. That's George Tabuki. Yeah. yeah, in the, in the car. He is really cute. Pete mentioned that uh, he's this a Russian that hung around in the paddock on the end also. He was called the Mad Russian, and he would his reputation was he would get drunk and sleep on the on the stone wall, right behind the stone wall in the big house, right in town. He would sleep over there all the time. <laughs> He was going he was going up Maple Street. I want to say Battle Street. Street. Going up Maple Street and apparently he fell down. Frank came by with the plow, literally plowing. <laughs> <laughs> and he woke up the next morning. It's no snow. <laughs>
what they were called. This name. We always called them the lollipops. Yeah. It's interesting. The road sign there uh, that was cement pillar with wood was done by the uh, YMCA's uh, Try High Y clubs. High Y? Hi -Y. Hi -Y. Yeah. And um, I thought it was one of the best projects done because they put it at every street. Every street got labeled with these very nice signs. And for credit to the, at that point, the county YMCA. So I read somewhere a little clip, something about Joe Peterman used to be at the Rotary. Okay. Somebody want to add to that? Yeah. Um, I'm Peggy Breslin, and I grew up in the Chester Center for seven years, and my parents had Joe's package store. And every Friday night for the bank, Joe would go to those rotaries with his whistle, and he'd have the traffic in such a mess, he wouldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. I was down at one uh, Friday night, I worked at Carlson's, and, and uh, what's his name? Um, Alvin Carlson from out by the lake. Yes, yeah. Yeah. was coming across the street, and Joe Peterman was there, and, and he, and Alvin walked up, and, and right in front of him, he said, "Joe, what's your name?" <laughs> Joe was stuck. He didn't know what to say. <laughs> 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 oh God, I could tell a quick story about Lydia Fargo about the uh, the rotary too, but she pulled up in front of the bank, and she had a standard car, and she revved that car up. And grabbed the cup and she popped that clutch and she went directly across the street right into my father's car. <laughs> and threw it first and took off up the hill. I got out of chase. Are you hit me? Yeah, but I'll have to get home. Lydia's <laughs> problem was she was really short. Yes. And she could not reach the clutch. <laughs> that, was, that was her problem. And, and, and then. Frank Ferrari was the stone, they put a truck clutch in. Well, they asked if she went through so many. Yeah, they yeah. put a truck clutch in, then she didn't have the strength to let it out. <laughs> <laughs> so she would go up to, she would go up to School Hill there, Church Hill there, yep. and by the end of it, the, the car was just loaded with, with clutch clutch. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question, well, because my best friend, Betty Ann Schutte, was her um, grandniece. And uh, she lived with my friend's grandmother on Wake Hill. And she was probably, now I'm five one, and she was probably four, four or something. Wow. She had a hard time seeing, and you could never see that there was someone in a car. <laughs> <laughs> she was going to teach us how to drive. <laughs> and when she said that, Betty Ann's mother um, took her aside, and I remember there was a big to do about it because we were about 15 and one, we could learn to drive by the time we were 16. And we never did, because she, that was. We're <laughs> 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 making fun of her, though. I tell you what, she was way ahead of her time. Mary Ann is good. She was Mary very Anne. smart and very capable. She, she was. was. Yeah. Mary Ann? Yeah. Hi, I'm Mary Ann. <laughs>
Nesta Walden have cleaners. And where was Nesta's cleaner? In the right next to the same building. Oh, and then, of course, we had the other We had this on Facebook. If any of you are on Facebook, we try to share the pictures that we get um, because they're so fabulous to see. But I don't always put the names of everybody in there because partly I want to get people talking. So that then they start talking to each other and then they start sharing stories and then we save the stories. Who is that teacher in the back? We should be able to Does anybody that. know that teacher? What, what, third grade? Third grade. It says third grade. Oh, I don't know who it is. Mrs. Clark. Brianne? My brother's the furthest yeah, one left with the little glasses on. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. 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 I recognize her. Is he? Okay. My brother was here. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, what year was he born in? 
I see a good looking guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, show us the good looking guy. We want to see the boy in there. I'd say that's the best looking guy in the class. Uh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Can I have a chance? Look at this. Okay. <laughs> He's your town engineer here, Jeff Jacobson. Oh, yeah. That's Jeff. And Cindy Yacht's in there. She's this is Cindy. Right? She's the one who gave us to us. George Foreman. Right? That Foreman TV up on Story Hill up there. Who else I got here? Ray Walden. Ray Walden. Karen Zanardi used to live on the Apollo. Oh, yeah. Um, this is Doug and Lori, your daughter. No, Lori was not in that house. No? She was in the other one. This is this is Carl Hanulica, right? Yes, that's Carl. Oh yeah. Yeah, that is Carl. Yep. I'm trying to think. I'd have to look at this one for a while. Denise Smith lived on Goose Hill. That's Kevin Albert's mother. Great. Anybody remember what it was like to go to school in the fifties? You want to share? Yes, let's talk about that building. Couldn't wear pants, that's for sure. Yeah. This is the old school. That's the old school. The old school, yeah. I started in Chester High School. We were the last kindergarten class to begin there and walk up the hill. Because I had measles and mumps and I couldn't go to school, so my grandmother drove off so I could sit on the hood of the car and watch the parade go <laughs> So there's a... Uh, uh, Dr. Zito's movie, there's a picture of that day. Yes. Everybody yeah, yeah. Out. Books. And my mother's in that uh, picture, Elsie Cipher. She, she always told the story about um, she, she lobbied for the new school. She was on the PTA. And she talked with some woman in town who's quite elderly. And she asked her, Are you going to vote for the school? And she said, No, it's too much money. And my mother said, I wouldn't want it under my, my conscience if the, the school burned down and, it, and everybody was you know, hurt. And she saw her after the vote, and the woman said, I voted for your school. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't usually like that, but she was very, very determined about this. But that school, I remember the, particularly I remember the basement. Oh, God. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. 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 And how dark it was, yeah. and, you know. Okay. Tilly was always down there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I could remember when it was coal fire downstairs. And wow. Yeah. And Chil Lavazola used to take the ashes and throw them out on the playground. And that, 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 was, that was our uh, baseball field. Well, that's the other thing I was thinking about is how, mu how much outside time we have. Well, I remember all these recesses. We were outside all the time. We were playing kickball in the front. We had a jungle gym in the back. We had a globe in the back. You know, yeah, and the they were, back. They were passing back. love notes back and forth and all sorts <laughs> of things like that. But we were outside. <laughs> and it was great. Nice skate. We skate around. Wow. 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 Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Prior, prior to that, oh, yeah. we went to the fence. When I first joined the kickball, we go across the street to the library and down into the gully. We have to go across the street. How large was the population? How large was the population at that time? I'm sorry, a couple thousand. A couple thousand. Yeah. My mother was tax collector in '68, and she knew everybody. Well, that's Jennings. Yeah. Oh, wow. That had to be the noisiest factory in Connecticut. Remember how much noise so, they made? Oh, yeah. Bang, bang, bang. Bob, who wants this picture? Is this your, your story? These, these were from the Historic Society. Yeah. I'd like to get a copy. One that, yeah. 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 Ye
I'm writing a book, but you can just jump down. Oh, it's 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 Camp Hazen is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year, yes. built in 1920. Uh, did not work here? Did not go co ed until 1978. Um, with a relationship with 17 YMCA's around the state of Connecticut. Uh, the big contributor to, to buy the land was uh, Edward Hazen, who became quite known uh, as a philanthropist uh, in, in, in many communities, but it's named for Edward Hazen. And it was, it was integrated, as I understand, and the council's family moved here largely because of connection with yeah. Camp Hazen. So, say that? I think that, who's the woman, is she still here? Marta. Yes, Marta. Marta. I, uh, the, the person that I think about being the big funder was the silent partner of Senator Hazen by the name of uh, Clarence Blakesley from the Blakesley Construction Company, who also funded all of the education, including the law degree of, of Judge Clemson's yes. Baker Motley. And she lived right near Camp, Camp Hazen. Hazen. Yeah. But it was, I think it was integrated, Tim Hazen was, which was, it was, was amazing. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I think her relationship with him, it's she credits yeah. him for everything that yeah. she was able to accomplish yeah. because yeah. without his funding, silent talking. funding, and without the silent funding that Senator Hazen received from him to right. buy the land right. in 1919, that wouldn't have right. existed. So we have, we have very interesting connections know, together yeah. as a community. Yeah. We should always honor them and remember them. The, the, the Cajun would have been, pardon me. Because of why? Why was it? Why was it out of the Cedar Lake? Oh, which is the end of the year? I don't know if it was a farm. It was a farm. It was a farm. I have no idea who they were supposed to be. There was a schoolhouse right there, too, I think. There was a schoolhouse down here. It would be integrated because the YMCA's that participated, there were 17 original YMCA's that participated, and all the statewide YMCA's were integrated, and they sent boys, so they could not not take uh, all, all of you, all boys. Ferguson managed, I think, Bob Blair, that she would take it and 
what she wanted was a witness. And, and Bob told me the story. She wanted a witness to the purchase or to the assaying that she wanted the house. And, but she never felt closer you know, to, to a community then because of, of, um, of the camp, yes. So it's a great story. And the, and the community embraced her. You know, uh, oh, sure. yeah. became her great friend, and Constance Baker Motley became one of the founding trustees of the Chester Historical Society. Of course, she was a great person in her own right. This is a great transformation. This is my father's car. It's your father's car? Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we got that picture. Yes. 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 Yeah. All right, so you all are out of the West End of town. Yeah. So what do you remember about this and this that shack? Well, I'll, I'll start this off because one of the things I wake up thinking about is bicycling. Because when, when we grew up, I mean, we had one car, and I would never think of asking my mother to drive me anywhere. And I bicycled all over, and I largely bicycled all around Cedar Lake. My friends were down Cedar Lake Road. And I wasn't afraid, you know, I would get on my bike and just go off for hours. And it was just a wonderful way to grow up. I spent hours down here swimming. Now, what I would like to know is, I was always told, I always liked to swim at this end here, although I, the other end was nice because you could go in and it was deeper, faster. But I was told there were these very large snappy turtles in the lake, but that they would always stay at the other end. <laughs> now, I grew up thinking this. Now, anybody else ever hear this story about war? But there was a story about, um, who was the mailman? Squint? Oh, Carl. Carl. Baby Annie. Well, 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 yeah, he was driving home one night, and apparently he saw this one of these huge snappy turtles, and he completely Jack freaked Smith, out. I think, was back then. But um, there are large snappy turtles down there, I understand. So How large? Did you well, know? these were pretty, pretty big. So they're probably large than any. Pretty big. <laughs> but you know, can you imagine growing up thinking that they would buy you in the lake, you know? They're all gone now. And we walk. Yeah. And we'd stay there all day, yeah. peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'd come home scorched oh, red. Yeah. And my mother, fortunately, had a lot of butter. <laughs> <laughs> to 59 that learned to swim at, at this beach uh, with Chick Anderson who was yeah, yeah, taught right. yeah. a whole yeah. generation yeah. Yeah. Of, yeah. of young people yeah. and they had a uh, life saving, <laughs> a junior life saving, senior life saving. You started as a minnow and fish and flying fish and shark and, and porpoise if you know how to do the butterfly. And uh, Dean Anderson, his son, was certifying senior lifesavers. And I got my first senior lifesaving uh, certificate in, in, in Cedar Lake. Um, and I don't know what the relationship was, but this was like the town side. But on the far side, the were terrorists. Some, the terrorists. The terrorists. Uh, I'm, still, I'm still friends with some of the folks I met under the rack. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it, it was a great place to grow up, and uh, it was a lot, a lot less crowded on that side yes. and than, than over here, where I just a, I think anybody could in those anybody days could go, could go on this side, right? The other side, side was the town side. Two beaches, the town side and then the private, the terrace only beach. Yeah. They had the rest. Yeah. That was for the terrace, seemed like terrace. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, we were no, no, supposed to be. Yeah, they were supposed to be. The rabbit was the rabbit. 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 The rabbit was the rabbit
I was found when you came back. Because there was one off at the checkpoint. So the answer to that was there are two rats. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe at one time. But then the other thing is, of course, the lake would always freeze beautifully hard in the winter, and we yeah. skated yeah. there. Yeah. Well, it was actually, so it was actually, a jacket. It was great. We got one of those again. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Peggy Breslin. Give me yeah, a picture. Great jack. So that was swimming at the terrace? terrace. That's a terrace site. Yeah. 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 That, that was oh, not all that we got to the get it. I forgot about the main one. I should have said, I don't think you heard that in the movie. <laughs>
We put a clothesline on it. We had some friends come from Manhattan, and they were sitting on the porch. And they looked at the clothesline, and they were like, this is the only thing that doesn't belong here. I live in Knox. This is a great place to hang out. Anyway, so be it for country ways, you know. Except when they froze in the winter. Oh, yeah. I remember bringing them in like that. So who used to get together? John, you were talking about this earlier. Yeah, we always, when my, uh, when I was growing up in the 50s and early 60s, Sunday, noontime, you had dinner. We all went yeah. to my grandmother's, there were 13 of us, with all my family, my aunt and uncle, and mom and dad, my sister, myself, we always had to go to grandma's Sunday. And some of you people can probably remember, you always had to go to either your mother's or your grandmother's for, for Sunday dinner. And Sunday dinner was at noon time. And you don't want to be late. You know, it was precisely at noon time. And that's that's the way it was for years, up until God, I'm gonna say probably about the mid sixties or late sixties. We used to go there every Sunday. So in that same way, Peggy, that was um, Frank Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, I lived on your uncle, right? Yep. They lived on Pleasant Street. Right. 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 Right there, Bob's grandfather, but right. they lived on half of it, and Bobby's grandfather lived on the other half of the house. That's right. That was a that was a normal thing for Sundays. Right? Yeah, well, I wanted to ask others about Sundays too. I mean, we um, my uh, I think my great grandparents kept the Sabbath. So what that meant was we go to church in the morning and then everything must have been cooked. I don't even know what happened. We'd have a big dinner, same thing. And something. But then we didn't we didn't do anything in the afternoon. People would come up to visit. Yep. You know, we a family would come up, we'd sit around, you know, we did we didn't have a television show, I think fifty six. But that didn't go on until the evening. Um, and but you know, we just had a quiet time. The hammocks were out there and it was really a lovely, quiet day. I always remember that. It was a very peaceful day. You know, we never went shopping. We never did. We could. We could go to the store. We didn't go shopping anyway. I don't know about the rest of you, but shopping was something you did when you needed something. A coat or a pair of shoes. But we never went as entertaining. So we just didn't have the money to do that. So we just, we never went out to shopping. Any other Sunday memories?
by six o'clock Saturday night, are you ready till Monday? Yeah. <laughs> or you went to the knock neighbor and knock on the door and say, can I borrow a baby, a cup of flour, a cup of milk? And then you can turn it Monday when the store's open. Yeah. How many of you had farms in the 50s? How many, how many of your families were farming? Anybody were farming? We're, we're, still, we're, we're still farming. My grandfather. Still yeah. 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 So yeah. my grandfather in the 50s. Early in the 50s, yeah. in the 50s we were. Yeah. Yeah. After that. They had cows. Yeah. Yeah. My, 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 my father did, he died in 52, but I think they kept the chickens for a They had 500 chickens for wow. the beginning well, of the 50s. In the 50s, there was a lot of. You're talking chicken farms. Oh, yeah. You had glazers up on Goose Hill. Oh, you had donuts up on Goose Hill. I mean, they had tens of thousands of chickens. I used to bring it down to the Colchester, the, the place down there by. Um, Route where exit four is off of Route Nine. Oh yeah, there was a place yeah. to collect the eggs. The egg company. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the eggs down there. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. well, you, you have the largest hatchery in the world right down there. Wow. Went on hatchery to Morris. That was the biggest in the world. One of the uh, places that had in the fifties, one of the places that had chickens was the dump. Absolutely. The chest dump really? had a crop of chickens. Really? And the oh, reason yeah. for that was <laughs> that. Warner's Hatchery, they would have the fertilized eggs and they would wait so long and if those eggs didn't hatch, they threw them in the dump. Oh. And, they hatch. and they would hatch in the dump. <laughs> and they would run around and my grandfather had his own little crop of chickens and I can still remember my grandmother would get down and feed them. And the old nanny was about four foot nine and she was eight feet. And she would and she would have it, the feet in her apron, and she'd strip it like that, and all of a sudden that hand would go whack, and she'd have a chicken or something. <laughs> 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 but people would come to the dump, and I'm sure Eddie can remember this. That's where people would come and get baby chickens. My dad chickens. never bought a chicken. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the chickens would burn them all over the dump. That, 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 that went on as long as the hatchery was still. Wow. Hey, Eddie, you, you with, with the Castelli's next to us, the farm, People in town realize you didn't drive on Route 9 certain times of the day because the cows are all crossing the street going to the front of the cow. I mean, it's like, you think a school bus stop is bad. <laughs> you, get, you get Cal and Henry yelling at each other, nothing gets I learned half my, I learned half my colorful words from that. <laughs> uh, the 50s, the 50s uh, uh, Claudia and Angelo, that farm was operating Hill and Dale at the end of. Sunset. Yeah. Yeah. Cool had to have some cows on, on Wheat Hill. Right. Yeah. right here. I don't know what the was still operating yeah. in the 50s. I, they, they might have been. It, it was very transitional right yeah. there because uh, this was Maple Shade Farm. Kirtland's yeah. was Maple yeah. Shade. Yeah. And we were Elmwood there. Yeah. And uh, El I think Kirtland went out before the Castelli brothers went out. But we, there were also back then people that had cows, had their own right. cows. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I tell this story all the time. When I went to college, the old man finally decided it was time to tell me about the birds and the bees. <laughs> and he did it in a cow barn. <laughs> <laughs> Brooks's bar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and the old man always had cows. My grandfather had cows. Uh, people, you know, they would keep three or four cows. Yeah. Yeah. We had them at home. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we had cows and chickens. One of the stories I remember at, at Warner's Farm, again, this is what I've always heard, they had a fellow that worked for um, Ken Ingraham, who worked for Warner's Chicken Farm, and supposedly he was the only one who could tell the sex of a baby chicken. Ah, that was, he was the expert at telling them at a very, very young age how he could sex that chicken. He could determine which was which. Claude <laughs> <laughs> Angelo and a guy that lived out here. You remember that, the guy that lived out in the bar? I will watch the Angelos. Yes, I do. I don't remember his name. I can't remember his name either. Oh, yeah. What was, that, what was his name? John. He couldn't speak English. No. That, that, that's right. And he slept, he slept there. He lived there. In the, in the hay. Um, and 
And when they, when they cry, I don't ever, ever know what happened. But he was, Claude and Angel. It's right at the end of Sunset Paris. Yeah. I, I, I remember the guy that, that he, could, he could not speak, if he, he spoke at all. But he was. I remember the work of him. Aim was a big deal. Remember that? Aim was a big deal. It was pretty much the only job in the summer. It was all the same. You used to hire the guys. Well, do you have a Irwin Road? The farm is no longer there. It's the exit six now. Irwin Ruddy had a farm there, and he did arcading on Wig Hill. He used to come up and do that. That was a beautiful little spot. He was putting up the house. When the cows got old and they weren't giving milk, where do you think they went? Not to cow heaven. There was a man who was a butcher and he used to drive up Wig Hill and take our, I remember twice he took one of our cows, and then a few years later he took another old cow. And my mother and father wouldn't tell us why they went away. Still remember him. He was an old guy, and I think he came from New Haven. He had a green, yep, a green, a green truck, a rack body and truck. And they would take them poor little heifers after the mother had nursed them to fatten them up, and he would tie them on the back of that truck and just drive away. Right? And it was always interesting. We had people had no trouble slaughtering pigs. I mean, everybody in town yeah, slaughtered sure, pigs. Sure, yeah. They could you, not remember? slaughter a cow. The cow yeah. the cows the always had to go someplace. Uh, the chickens, yeah. Oh, chickens. Every chicken. Saturday was the chicken. Yeah. Yeah. Chicken. Yeah. Chicken. Yeah. Chicken. Yeah. Chicken. Yeah. all their heads. And, yeah. 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 My grandfather was out there with the chopping block. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We, had, we, had a, we had a, my father was called the shirt tail farmer. He just did that for, for the, have the milk and the water and things like that. And we had this. One old Guernsey, we had it for years, and the, 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 the neighborhood thing saved us a lot, because like Slim Mara was going to rain, and the, the, the hay was cut, he'd come up and he could load half our field with about two pitchfork loads, he was a powerhouse, but my father had that cow, her name was May, had it for so long, and it was getting pretty old, and, but he could go out and sit in the field, and that cow would come over and lay down next to him, put her head in his lap. <laughs> we, I, we had the family has pictures of this, you know, it's one of our famous uh, family pictures. But that the same truck finally came. <laughs> 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 yeah, the guys, yeah. 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 They couldn't. They couldn't get the cow in the truck, and so my father finally said, "Wait a minute, just get out of the way." And he walked up the ramp into the truck and caught the cow. He wouldn't walk for about a month. I remember a little heifer we had down when Mercani Zanardi lived. That's where we lived, and it had a heart on its blaze and a heart. My mother married, named it Valentine. And, uh, and why she did, I don't know, because she did a damn well that cow that wasn't going to last very long. Yeah. You, needed a, you needed a male bovine like you needed to. Uh, <laughs> but I remember that Jimmy and I were really upset, horribly sure. upset. Of when course. It was. Yes. The tough thing, my is. Speaking of, of butchering chickens, if I may, mom and daddy had chickens. They had a few cows and some chickens. And mom and daddy could not kill their chickens. They couldn't do it. So they would take, mom would take it over to the calamaris and the house next door. And the calamaris would break the neck. And then, and then they would do the soup. But mom and daddy could not kill those chickens. I get that. Really? We killed them. My grandfather lived. We still live there. My sister lives there. Now I mean my niece. And uh, next door was, and you'll remember, Cliff Deuce. Yeah. And he used to work for the town. And back then, Frank Cypher would come up and get him in the morning. And he cut with a side on the side of the road. They called him Side Hill Deuce. One leg was shorter than the other. <laughs> <laughs> he had the church and stone. He'd have his water bucket with him. He had his lunch with him. They'd come up and get him. They'd put him on Goose Hill. 
and he, with his saw, he had always had his uh, uh, sharpening stone in his back, and he'd sharpen the saw. When I was just a kid, because we used to do his hay across the street, and I can remember it just as well if it was yesterday. My dad, we used to always pitch it up there dry, you know. I mean, it dusty and hasty. He'd be up there because you couldn't stack it the way he wanted it. So we always had to go up the hay mow. And he'd be stacking it over in the corner, you know, and I'd be pitching it from the door to him. He'd be up there coughing and hacking, and oh, yeah. the veins in his neck would be sticking out. I'd come down to my dad and say, I don't think he's gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> but he'd do it, and every day he'd wait for Frank Cypher to come up and pick him up in the truck, and they'd take him to different areas in the town, and that's all they did, you know. Oh, so rotary cutters like we have today, and motor machines, he'd just go to that side the whole time. That was a, yeah. one of the great arts was loading a hay wagon with Yep. Yeah. 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 You had to know exactly what you would right. do. You place one, you, you place the other, everything yeah. interlocked and yeah. the way you went. I got an age. education at an early age. <laughs> 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 yeah. This isn't about size, but I wanted to just uh, tell you that my uh, my uncle Clarence Cypher left a diary of the year that he came, <laughs> came home from the war in 45 mm -hmm. of, of coming back to Chester and the things that he and his brothers did. They were cutting wood all the time. They were playing cards, they were partying, you know. but it was great, it's great. I typed it up in the Historical Society, so if you want to read that, it's not very long. And I lent it to um, Louis Hanson, uh, Carl Hanson, because his father's mentioned in it, and his, his uh, grandmother as well. And it's really a nice nice little vignette of Chester in, in 1945 as well. Let's look at that, yeah. John, to take their story a little further, um, when Frank uh, was the manager of the job that you have, Daddy and the gentleman you referred to, the one with the short right, leg, yeah. they used to be on the back of the trucks in the winter, like yeah, this. Yeah, they would the ride same. in the backs of the truck yeah. and manually shovel dirt and yeah. salt. Yeah. Manually yeah. shovel yeah. from that back of that truck in the freezing, <laughs> freezing weather. And once or twice, Daddy came home, and I swear he was almost dead from the cold. Yeah. But that was what they did in those days. Bill Lawton, when Vinny oh, Larson was uh, <laughs> With Vinnie Larson, he had a 53 Studebaker, <laughs> and uh, Jimmy, Peter's brother, used to tell, he told the story, and he pulled into Johnny Gaines, and he says he wanted to gas her up, you know, fill her up, so he has it going. I said, geez, John, it's cold. And he looked in there, and there's no floorboards left. <laughs> <laughs> John went out back, and he got an old piece of plywood, and they cut it out, and so Vinnie had a probably didn't have a heater in it. I know that 55 Ford fire truck that was in that picture, that didn't have a heater in it either. The 41 with France didn't have a heater in it either. But he put that in there and he put a rug in there. And, but I can remember Vinny going by the house and sanding. They had an old drag sander in the back. And uh, Bill Lawton was one of them. And he'd be shoveling the sand to the, uh, the little thing, shooting the back, shoveling it into the sander. My dad would always come home from work, and I'd hear him coming, you know, and I had about a dozen snowballs all lined up. <laughs> dad could never figure out why there was no sand in front of the house. <laughs> Bill didn't have time. You know, he was busy bucking. He was swearing at me, and he'd be shaking. I never told Dad why there was no sand. <laughs> Because it's after four, I don't want to keep anybody too long. Um, I think we should wrap this up. However, we can stay for as long as you want. Do you have more things that you have? We not talked about all the topics you want to. Uh, I just like to add a couple things on how permanent masses. You know, my wife was a Chester native, um, uh, Pat Hills, and her grandfather was Captain Hills of who drove the drove a steamer on Middletown. Seen pictures of, of the yeah. now steamer. Um, and I also work on antique cars, and I bought a 1931 Model A truck from um, uh, the Foreman family up on Story Hill Road. And I guess it was uh, Joe Foreman's yeah. truck. And I tried to find some history on it, but uh, I was told he had one arm, so the insurance company made him put turn signals on the car on the truck because he couldn't put his arm on it. <laughs> <laughs>